Are you guys all taking physics too? Okay. So no summer break? No. Okay. What about you guys online? Are you taking physics too or are you going on vacation after this? Uh, yes, for me, I, I take the physics too. Okay. What about you, Logan? Monica, are you taking physics too? Yeah, I'm taking physics too after this. Okay. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Um not 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 for physics too. So I yeah, I'm not I I can't I I couldn't do it for physics too. Um so it's only for physics one. But you like those? Okay. I have what? Yes, I have a Van de Graaff generator, but I um, I'm not doing anything for physics two, so um, <laughs> maybe I could probably bring that. To that. Um, yes, I I'm not teaching physics two or doing any labs for it, so. Uh, as somebody else wanted to teach physics too, so. Uh, but if I'm teaching engineering physics too, that's the one with calculus next semester. Oh, don't, oh. Hopefully calculus doesn't make you barf, but. Um, you know, I will say though that I actually didn't like math until I took calculus. And when I took calculus, I was like, oh, this is amazing. Because then you see why you, you need all this math. Because before you get into calculus, you're like, why, why am I doing this? But then when you get to calculus, you're like, oh, I get it now. Now I understand why I need the algebra. <laughs> OK, well, last thing in the chapter before we move on. Um, and I just wanted to go over this because um, it can be a little bit confusing um, because when you're talking about relative motion, you have to think about um, where your origin is, where are you comparing that motion to, okay? And I know you had a problem uh, with the relative motion of the canoe and water, okay? And so a good way to think about it is, all right, when I find the velocity of my canoe, because it, it says, it tells you what the velocity is relative to the earth of the river and also of the canoe. And then you have to find, all right, what's the relative velocity between the, the, the river and the canoe? So I always think about, all right, what if a leaf was floating on the surface of the river and there's an ant on the leaf? Okay, so the leaf would be moving with the velocity of the river. And then if you were the ant, what would it look like the canoe how would the canoe be moving with respect to you? So even though you're both flowing in the same direction down the river, and from the um, ant's perspective, it would look like the canoe is moving away from you. So the canoe would be moving in a negative direction relative to you on, uh, on the leaf. So let's look at an example here. All right, so we've got uh, Bill, a runner, Amy, and Carlos, I don't know why the runner doesn't have a name. Let's call him Steve. So, 
So what's the relative velocity between um, Carlos and Amy, right? Well, looks like Amy's standing still. And so um, that one's not too bad. So that'd be 15 meters per second uh, between um, Amy and the runner. It's also five meters per second because she's just standing still. But what's the relative velocity between the runner and between Steve and Bill? What's what's the difference? What's their relative velocity? What is it? Yeah, yeah, it's zero. So they would be running next to each other. They're not moving. Hey, right, let me show you what I mean. So if I get my car going here, hey, what's the relative velocity between me and the car? Sled? Yeah, well, it was, it was, it was low. It was almost zero, but not quite. Oh, let's do it again, okay. So now, if I really wind this up, okay, I go like this. If I was on the car, the, somebody in the car would think I had a negative velocity going this direction, okay? Even though relative to the earth, we're moving this way, but me relative to the car, um, I would have a negative velocity in that direction, right? And we can calculate it. Um, let's go to the next slide. All right, so um, the one here, it's between the, uh, the first two are, are not, those are pretty obvious, okay? But the one here, the velocity of the runner relative to Carlos, okay? So we say, um, we wanna find the difference between those two. And so we say, all right, um, VAC, so that's, uh, what is VAC? That's, oh, the velocity between um, Amy and Carlos is 15 meters per second. And the velocity between, um, the runner and Amy is five. So we find the difference between those two. Okay, so the velocity of Amy relative to Carlos. Okay, so that's another thing. Carlos is in the car. He is, if he's driving away from Amy, to him, it looks like she's moving away at 15 meters per second. All right, so if you're in your car, uh, because everything in your car, is uh, is relative to you, it's stationary. So even though your car and you are going at 15 meters per second, um, if I look back over there, then that stuff is moving away from me at 15 meters per second, right? So I would take that uh, since uh, that velocity is um, minus 15, then uh, and we say everything is relative to um, Amy or the velocity of the runner with respect to Amy is five meters per second. So we find the difference between those and that gives us minus 10. So that minus 10 tells us that um, um, the relative velocity between the runner and the car is gonna be minus 10 moving to the left, okay? so. So my relative velocity will be over here between uh, the runner. Nope. So it'll be going that way. So it looks like the car uh, or the runner is moving away from you at minus 10 meters per second. So you just find the difference and then the sign tells you the uh, tells you the direction. So the main thing is though you you should you should think about it because sometimes the algebra can be confusing. And so if you look at it and say which way is uh, which way is negative, which way is positive, and imagine yourself in the car and think, all right, anything behind me is going to be moving away from me in the negative direction. So let's look at another example.
All right, now we've got a mouse on a piece, on a conveyor belt. Uh, the conveyor belt is rolling. So the conveyor belt is moving at three meters per second. Uh, um, so the conveyor belt rolls at three meters per second. The mouse sees a piece of cheese directly across the belt and heads straight for the cheese at four meters per second. What is the mouse's speed relative to the factory floor? So now we've got two components of velocity. Um, he's still going to be moving at four meters per second straight ahead towards the cheese, but we've also got this uh, velocity going down at three meters per second. So now we have two components of velocity. All right. So um, we say um, he's going four this way, and he's also going three down this way. Okay, so we want to find what is the magnitude of our uh, velocity, of our new velocity relative to the factory floor. So let's, let's work it out on a piece of paper. So our mouse has a velocity of four meters per second this way, and the conveyor belt is going three meters per second this way. So I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem, and I'm going to say its new velocity will equal uh, the square root of bx squared plus by squared. So that will be uh, 4 squared, which is 16, plus 3 squared, which is 9. So I'll have the square root of 16 plus 9, which is going to be 25. So I'll have the square root of 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. So his velocity will be uh, 20, or 5, 5 meters per second. So I found my new velocity by using the Pythagorean theorem. And so then my new vector is going to be, uh, have a magnitude of five meters per second pointing in that direction. All right. So that's going to, that's going to do it for chapter three. Now we're going to move on to chapter four. And we're going to talk about forces and Newton's laws of motion. All right. But for any kind of motion, we need to have a, a force acting on an object. So an object won't start moving unless a force acts on it. Um, and we also can't get a, an object to change its motion unless a force is acting on it. So um, if I wind up my car here and I let it go, it will continue on forever like that unless a, a force is acting on it. In the case of my car, there's friction between the, the wheel. And so friction will slow it down. Um, if I throw an object, so if I were to let it go, it would continue going on unless gravity acts on it. Gravity pulls it back to Earth. But um, Newton's law says an object in motion will continue in motion uh, forever unless an outside force acts on it. And if an object is at rest, it will continue to stay at rest unless it's acted on by a force.
All right. Forces cause objects to accelerate. Um, and a larger acceleration requires a larger force. So if you're in your toboggan and you want it to go faster, you have to um, accelerate it faster. You have to apply a force. The higher the force, the more acceleration you're going to get. Um, a hammer exerts a downward force on a nail. And the nail also uh, exerts a force backwards on the hammer. So uh, if I push on things, if I push on the desk, then the desk also pushes back on my hand. I, I feel a force on my hands and it pushes back on me. Um, and uh, if you've ever been hammering and you miss, then um, you'll, and you hit your finger, your, your hand will exert a force back on the hammer um, and you will definitely feel that. All right, so in chapter two uh, and three, acceleration is a vector. So if we have a change in our velocity, then we're going to uh, experience an acceleration. So um, it could be if there's a change in the magnitude or a change in the direction, either way, we're going to get an acceleration. So if the velocity changes for any reason, um, then that means there's a force acting. So are you guys at rest right now? Are there any forces acting on you? Which, which force is acting on you? Is gravity the normal force? Yeah, the normal force is pushing back up you uh, against you so you don't fall into the center of the earth. What other forces are acting on you? That's true. There's a uh, uh, friction is acting on you. What other forces are acting on you? Is there a centripetal force? Yes, the Earth is spinning. We all are spinning right now on the earth, so there's a centripetal force. Are there any other forces acting on you besides the earth spinning? What about the moon? Does the moon exert a force on you? Very small. Um, so the moon is, is exerting a force on you. Um, are there any other forces? There's another centripetal force because we're going around the sun, right? So there's a centripetal force from us going around the sun. Are there any other forces? You think? <laughs> that is a lot of forces. Um, our galaxies rotate. So the galaxy is also rotating. So there's a centripetal force from that too. Um, are there any other forces? Well, the universe also might be rotating. It's kind of hard to tell because um, in the universe, um, there's not really like a, uh, an origin. There's not a place where you're like, okay, I'm at zero, 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 x, y, and z. This equals zero in the universe, right? So um, our universe could be rotating. It also could be expanding. Okay? Do you guys know what the ultimate fate of the universe is? You've heard of the Big Bang, right? How's the universe going to end? Will it uh, like keep you know after the Big Bang is it kind of slowing down a little bit, and then maybe there's going to be a big crunch. At the end, maybe. 
Well, uh, scientists can't tell if there's going to be a big front. It appears like um, the universe is flying apart faster. It seems like something is pulling the universe apart because everywhere we look out in space, it looks like things are moving away from us faster. Like something is pulling it, pulling us apart. Um, physicists don't know what this is, and so they call it dark matter. They think that 90% of the universe is made out of this stuff called dark matter, and we don't know what it is. We can't find it. We, don't, we have no idea what it is. But it appears to possibly be pulling the universe apart faster. The universe is accelerating, okay? Um, so there are other forces. Now, how many of you guys read horoscopes? You don't have to, to answer if you don't want to. Um, but you know, in, in, in astrology, they say, well, you know, the, the position of the planets, it affects your whole life. Everything is determined by the position of the planets when you're, when you're born. And so it must, that must be, um, uh, a force that's responsible for that. Right. Oh, and by the way, um, if, if your sign is uh, a Libra, I'm a Libra, um, Libra is not actually on the horizon when you're born anymore. It's actually the one before that. Because we've moved so much in um, our position in the galaxy that now, when I was born, it was actually Virgo was on the horizon. So just can't see that. Um, so the question is, you know, how much force could Jupiter be exerting on me that it would affect me as a, as a human? Maybe. I don't know. I, it's well. Let's 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 see. So, um, how big it? How big of a force is gravity from the Earth? What do you think? That's a you can feel that, right? That's a pretty uh, appreciable force. Um, what about from the Moon? How do you think you can feel that that amount of force? Well, one thing that is affected by the force of gravity moon is the tides. The tides on Earth are caused by the moon. So the moon's gravity pulls water towards it a little bit. And um, as the moon goes around the Earth, uh, water actually bulges. On one side, it goes towards the moon, and on the other side, it bulges um, away from it. Okay? So we, uh, in that sense, we can experience um, where things on Earth are affected by the gravity from the moon. Um, now, from the sun, well, our planet is going in a, a circular orbit, so I'd say we can we're affected by that. But Jupiter is a little bit, a little bit harder. So if you, I would say I'm a little bit skeptical about astrology because the force from Jupiter is probably not that big. And I would say, hmm, how much is Jupiter affecting me today? I mean, I like Jupiter, but I, I, so. I, you do experience a little bit of force from Jupiter. Um, so it's uh, maybe we're a little skeptical of astrology, especially since the constellation that you were born on is actually the one before. So if you thought you were Libra, no, that's wrong because I, you're, it's, it's actually the one before. So if, you're, if you've been reading your horoscope, you're probably reading the wrong one. You thought you were whatever sign. Um, so, um, uh, a swan is landing on an icy lake, sliding across the ice and gradually coming to a stop. As the swan is sliding in the direction of acceleration to the left. All right. What is the acceleration? What's the direction of acceleration? So as it comes to a stop on the icy lake, it's moving to the left. Which way is the force due to friction acting? And thus, it's acceleration. Yeah, it's going to the right because the uh, the swan is is slowing down. Um, my physics professor in college used to tell me this joke. He said, "You know, I, I know that college students are attracted to each other 
because if I put them on a lake and it was totally icy and there was no friction, the force of gravity between those two students would eventually pull them together, okay? Because the force of gravity is real. So um, really you can actually calculate a force of attraction between two people. Now, how long would that take? It might be a few thousand years, but it's still real, okay? It's, it's not zero. Maybe not very good. But, so maybe there's something else going on between college students. I don't know. It's hard to quantify that, so we don't like to talk about that. There's no equation for love. All right. So if you're not wearing a seatbelt and the car you're driving hits a fixed barrier, you will hit the steering wheel with some force. So hopefully you're not texting while you're driving or Snapchatting. TikToking or Facebooking or tweet, tweeting. Okay, but um, if you did, um, you weren't wearing your seatbelt, um, you'll hit the steering wheel with some force. Why is that? Yeah, it's. It's inertia. What is it? What does that mean? Inertia? What is this inertia? That's true. It is it is inertia. What is it? Yes. That's right. You are in motion inside of the car. You're you're moving with the car, right? And if the car stops. You, the passenger, will continue moving inside of the car. So even though the car has come to a stop, you will keep going. Um, now, if, um, if you're not wearing your seatbelt, um, something has to stop you. And in that case, it'll be the steering wheel uh, or maybe your front windshield. One of those things is going to stop. Because once the car stops, you keep going. Um, and that's why everything in your car is your is it is it kind of squishy or is it a little is it is it really hard? Is it like metal? It's kind of squishy. What does the squishiness do? Yeah, it doesn't hurt so much. Um, now my friend had a classical car, it was uh, from the 1950s it was this beautiful yellow car and the interior was completely metal like it was it was really awesome though but everything in the car was made out of metal and the steering wheel was wood so um and and i think at that time actually um seat belts were not required okay so uh, you didn't have to wear a seat belt in fact when people, when they started uh, introducing seatbelts, there was a huge uh, group of people that were like, you're taking away my rights. I should have a choice not to wear seatbelts if I want to. You're infringing on my liberty. Well, that's, maybe that's true. Um, but there were people that were very opposed to it. Um, they didn't want to wear seatbelts. But let's look at what happens. Um, okay, yes. So I've got my, my IO sensor here. I'm going to turn it on. Okay. And we'll, we'll do uh, the accelerometer here. Okay. And we'll do two collisions. Okay. We'll say that this one is my, my hard metal object. Okay. So this would be, um, let's say that that's your dashboard there. It's made out of metal. And of course, you're not wearing the seatbelt, right? Wait, is that the? Um, hmm, is that maybe we wanted the?
let's do it a little bit uh, less violent this time. So let's get it going here. We'll Let's put it on on some paper here. Oh, actually, let's put on let's put on the force sensor. All right, so I've got force down below and uh, my accelerometer. So I'm going to start this. We're not sharing the data. We still just see the PowerPoint. Oh, okay. Well, it didn't work yet. So let me. Uh, all right, so here's my my force sensor. All right, so I've got my force right here where I hit the surface. All right, so it looks like I got down here to about uh, six Newtons, All right? And let's take another, well, let's put something squishy in the way. We'll put my, my back here. Okay, so the first one here, this went down to about five Newtons. And then let's go over here. Oh, okay. So the first one, it got to five newtons. But the second one, when I hit the hard surface, the maximum force was minus 12. So that means that um, if you, or say your head, hits a, a squishy surface, the maximum force that you're going to experience is going to be uh, much less. Whereas if you hit something hard, um, that's going to be much higher. So here you'll get up to 12 Newtons. Um, and the other one here, this is, this only gets to about five Newtons. 
Okay, so we hit something squishy. Um, and let's look at, it also looks like um, the time of collision with the soft one, it takes longer than say right there. Okay, so um, yeah, so this is much faster. And so our, our uh, force happens over a much shorter time. So having um, squishy things inside of a car can save your life. And also um, a seatbelt too. So the seatbelt keeps you in your seat and um, it increases the amount of time that you experience that force during the collision. Um, if you don't wear a seatbelt, you, you can just bounce off the steering wheel. You might, uh, you might go through the, um, through the windshield. So uh, you should wear your, your seatbelt. All right. So if you're not wearing your seatbelt, um, this is because uh, you continue moving even after the car stopped, and the only thing that's going to stop you is that steering wheel. So you'll continue on inside of the car until you come to rest because of the steering wheel. All right, if you stand on a trampoline and it depresses under your feet, um, when you stand on a hard stone floor, uh, does the floor, does that stone change position at all? So the floor does not deform under your weight, it's too stiff, or uh, the floor deforms very slightly under your weight, or uh, the floor deforms a slight amount if you're heavy. So does the stone change shape at all? Well, maybe a little bit. So if you are, um, everything will flex a little bit, but it might be, it might be very small. All right, so we're not gonna talk about the um, orthogonal force, but we will talk about tension. So that's if you're pulling something with the rope, uh, we're gonna talk about the normal force so if the floor is pushing up on you, and also uh, the force of thrust. All right, let's talk about outer space. So if I were in outer space and I have my rockets on, so let's say I'm, I'm headed to Mars. Um, So if I'm headed to Mars um, and I get going fast enough and I turn off my engine, will I come to a stop? No, I'm just gonna keep going forever. So in the in a science fiction movie, if they're in outer space and they turn off the rockets and the ship stops, that's completely wrong. Um, in in reality, they'll just fly on forever. So uh, the satellite Voyager, um, Voyager has left our solar system. It had enough velocity where it left the solar system and it's going to continue outwards away from Earth for probably billions of years, unless it collides with something along the way, maybe a, a stray asteroid, but um, it's just gonna keep going forever. So, um, Yeah, unless there's something in the way, but we'll just go on forever. All right, so here's a picture of a uh, sled. Okay, so the sled is moving, but if we're on smooth snow, uh, the sled comes to a stop pretty soon. Um, if we're on slick ice, the sled will go much farther. Uh, so even when you're on ice, though, there's a little bit of friction. It's not zero. Uh, so eventually you're stop, you will stop. If there was no friction, then you will keep going forever. So if you were um, on a frictionless plane, 
An air hockey table, that's almost, that's pretty close to no friction. So when you hit the puck, it will just it keep sliding. Um, eventually wind resistance will would slow it down, but um, the friction is almost zero. So it goes um, forever if there was no friction. All right. So consider an object that has no force acting on it. If it's at rest, it will remain at rest. If it's moving, it will continue moving in a straight line at a constant speed. Will never change. All right. So if a car stops because a, a force acts on it, the crash dummy, of course, will continue at the same velocity until a force acts on it. In this case, it's a it's a steering wheel. Um, nowadays, we have uh, most cars have airbags, and you also have a seatbelt. So um, an airbag will it could it will stop it could save your life. Um, a seatbelt's a little bit better, but uh, the airbag would stop you. Um, when you hit the airbag, um, the time it takes you to slow down is much, much higher. So it's like landing on a pillow. Uh, that what it does is it um, it decreases the maximum force and increases the time it takes for you to uh, it it increases the time of your collision. All right, so. Uh, when a force acts on an object, you can either push it or pull it. Uh, so if I had my uh, if I have my car here, I could push it like this. That's a force, or I could pull it with a rope. Now, force is a vector, so it always has a direction. So if I hit my uh, my pool ball with the cue, uh, with the pool stick, then um, I, it's a very directed force. Same thing with the baseball. Um, that acceleration has a specific direction and that's going to determine its uh, initial velocity. The long range forces are forces that act on an object without physical contact. So gravity acts on you without touching you. Um, so there's nothing actually physically there that's touching. Um, so we could have a uh, long range force, like a magnet. Magnets attract each other and they, they don't actually have to be touching. So there can be a force at a distance. Um, and we can use the diagram to represent our force. So if I uh, push on my car, let's switch. All right, so here's my little cart. And if I push on it this way, then there's gonna be a force directed in that direction. So if I, here's my car, if I push on it this way, then I can say, I'm gonna represent my car by an arrow. So if I push on it like this, then I'm gonna say my force is directed this way. You can have different forces acting in different directions. So I could use two fingers and push inwards. Okay, those forces will add together. So if I push like this, I could have two forces pushing one this way and one this way. That's going to give me a combined force in this direction. Okay, so I, if I had Force one here and force two here. The Y components of those forces will cancel and I'll only be left with the with the force going this way. So I'll say, all right, FX is here and this will be F1X and F2X, 
And then I'll have my, this will be F to Y and F one X. So this force, force three, so F three would equal F one X plus F two X. And no, wait, that's, is that right? Those forces should cancel. So this should equal zero. I want the Y forces. So F3 will equal F1Y plus F2Y. So these forces are opposite. They cancel with each other. And now I only have my Y forces which will combine. So whatever my object is, I'm going to represent it as a particle uh, around the center of mass of that object. So I'd say, all right, if my force is acting on my car, then I'll balance it on my finger and I'll find the center of mass of my car. And then I'll draw my car as a dot. And I'll, I'll say, all right, how many forces are acting on my car? So um, there's acceleration due to the wheels. Uh, there's the normal force acting on it. Um, and gravity is acting on my car. All right. So I draw the force vector as an arrow pointing in the direction that the force acts and with a length proportional to the size of the force. Uh, and then I give, I label it, or whatever it is, I find a name that I can remember. So F car, F C. All right, so we could have a, a force due to tension. So if I have a heavy object and I pull on it with a rope, I could have a force due to a spring. So if I had a box attached to a spring, so uh, there would be a spring force. Um, human tissue has a, a certain amount of spring force. So if you push on uh, your skin, there's uh, cells have a certain amount of spring force. Then there's also um, gravity. So gravity pulls your box down and keeps it attached to the earth. Um, I can have uh, many different forces. So if I have several ropes acting on a box, uh, then I could sum up the total amount of forces. So I would, I would take all my forces and I would add their X and Y components together. And then I would get a new total force. So, because you can always add your forces together. So here I put F1 and I add F1 and F2. That gives me a combined force, which is called my net force. All right, let's look at a problem. The net force on the object points to the left. Two of the three forces are shown. Which is the missing third force? All right, so my object points to the left. Which force should I pick to make this object move to the left? I've already got F1 and F2. So with just F1 and F2, would it move to the left? No. Because there, one's pointing to the right and one's pointing up. So if I just combined F1 and F2, I would get a, a net force that looks about like that. So I got my X and Y components, but something is giving me a net force. Okay, so it says the object, the net force on the object points to the left. So that's my net force. 
All right, so let's take a vote. How many people think it's A? F3 points up and to the left. What about B? Okay. Or what about C? Or D? Maybe D. C. Um, somebody tell me why they think it's C. Yes. Yeah, that's right. So we need to have a force going to the left to cancel out F2. All right, so we've got to have a force that's bigger than F2 going to the left at least to make it go to the left. But then we also have F1 up there. F1 would want to make it go upwards. So we need a force that's also going down. So we need one that's going to the left and downwards. So the only one it can be is, is F3 because that has, a, that has a component that's downward and to the left that is bigger or uh, does it have to be equal to F1 or bigger than F1? It has to be equal. So if it's just Moving to the left, we need a component of this force that equal and opposite to F1. And it has to be greater than F2 if it's accelerating to the left. All right, so when I push on this table, I'm gonna push really hard. Which is the table exerting a force on me that's bigger or am I exerting a force on it? Who's exerting the bigger force, the table or me? Yes. Because the table is not moving. So it was a trick question. If the table was moving, then, uh, then it, would, it would not be equal. What if I push on this chair? Who's exerting the bigger force? Yeah, I'm, I'm exerting the bigger force. Uh, yes. What if the chair is, uh, what's the net force on the chair if it's moving at a constant velocity? So if it's moving, I'm going to write it. I'm tired. I'm moving this one. What's the net force on me right now? Zero. Yeah, I'm not accelerating. Well, now I accelerated. I actually I decelerated. Oh, that's a lot scary. A little scary. All right. Well, that's all for today. Fortunately, that ladder didn't tell me so. All right, thanks for coming today, guys. Continue, start, if you haven't started reading chapter four, start reading chapter four. Um, the reading assignments are really helpful. I think you should do them, uh, but you don't have to. Uh, and we'll continue on with chapter four tomorrow. Then on Monday, we're gonna have another test over chapter three and four. Was there anything to turn in today? No, there wasn't today. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Professor. Uh, uh, professor, uh, for the uh, exam two, so uh, which chapter will be covered? Like the chapter exam three? Exam two is going to be over chapter three and four. Okay, got it. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Yes. All right. So. So I, I designated the it as like a, a not filled in dot and a filled in dot. Uh -huh. So the relative velocity relative to the open dot, uh -huh. would that be negative two since it's it would seem like that's going back or would it be positive two? Um, so the 
relative velocity of that dot would be negative two. Of the black dot? Yeah. Okay. Is it because you do the, this one minus the black one? Well, if you're saying that positive is to the right, yep. then um, this the black dot would appear to be moving towards you. So wait, if this one's going five that way, and it's moving three this way, what's your relative velocity between those two? It would be two, but I, I can't tell the difference. Would it be two though? Would it, would it not be? Well, because let's say you're let, let's say we're in you're driving at me and I'm driving at you, and I'm going 60 miles an hour, and you're going 60 miles an hour coming towards me. What's our relative velocity relative to each other? Is it zero? If we're both going 60 towards each other. Well, then it would be 120, right? Oh. To a, well, to a, um, a stationary observer. So, yeah, because if, if I'm in the car, um, I would see you coming at me at 120. Okay. So does it is is it because I maybe got a tip here, but if they were both at this point, would it be negative two? Actually, wouldn't it be because you say you find the difference? So it'd be five this way minus minus three. So, so then it would eight? be eight. Yeah. Okay. Because if they're moving, to, um, is it to a stationary observer? It'd be eight. Let's see. Um, well, to a stationary observer, they would see you moving at five, and then they would see the other thing moving at two. Well, so they, they, would, they wouldn't see the other thing moving at three? Uh, they would see this one moving at three, going to the left, and they'd see you moving at five going okay. away. So or, it would be a total of eight then for relative velocity? Well, relative to each other, it would look like this thing is coming at you at like three plus five, so it would be eight. Does that make sense? Or? Well, it's just, it's, it's just saying, where are you measuring the velocity from? Can you, can, you, can you give me an example? Yeah. Sure. Well, let's say, uh, I'm part of here. And um, let's say they're going away from each other. Right? And I'm going five meters per second, and this one's going at 15 meters. Yeah, they're both going to the right. So then our relative velocity, okay, so here's a stationary observer. Um, so then uh, relative to stationary observer, so let's let's calculate this one, right? Let's see what's the relative velocity of car number one relative to car number two. Yeah, that would be 10. Uh, so if you're in car number two, yeah. what velocity would you would have looked like? I'd say if you were in car number two, it would be negative 10. Yeah. Because you're moving away from this. Right. Yeah, so that looks like some power. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Now, what if uh, what if the car was going the other way now? Say it was going this way at five minutes. Oh, I think I see what you're saying. It would be 20? Yeah. Okay. It's not negative. Uh, it would be negative because if you're saying, all right, my coordinate system is moving with this car. So this is um, this is x equals zero and x equals my coordinate system moves with this car. It's not it's not okay. stationary. Okay. So because this is going away here and yeah. So it adds up. So positive x is this way. Okay, so you only then, subtract them when they're going the same direction. Well, you always you always subtract it. Yeah. Okay? So you always say, all right. Um, so I'd say, all right, my velocity relative to the ground, this is you know, relative to the earth. 
or stay tuned or this one I think. Um, this velocity would be the, a one, but that's part two, relative to the earth is, uh, and then I would subtract it from this velocity, so V1 relative to the earth. Okay, but in this case, you add that it's a negative velocity. Yes. Okay. Right. So this one would be uh, 15 meters per second going that way. And this one would be minus a minus five meters per second going that way. Okay. So now, when we were talking, you said it would be relative to part two, it's negative one, right? Yes. So this so, is. So would you switch these two points? Or how, like, how do you know which one to put first? Uh, well, the way I do it is I just say, all right. This direction is negative, so then this is going to be uh, minus one. Okay, so you're just saying like you're thinking like oh, it's a relative part two being minus. Yeah. So it's a relative part one being plus one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That I, makes sense. I, I actually yeah, I, I understand that. This, this this helps. Okay. So yeah, um, I always have to think about like what's happening yeah. uh, because you know you can do it with just the algebra, but you might get so you still need to be aware of like what's actually happening. No, I, I think I was, yeah, I think I was trying to use just the algebra that's what it was. Okay. Because it, it, it makes sense now that if you're moving in the opposite directions, they, it seems like they're going faster than they're going. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you. Okay. Um, do we have the online library open tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to, we're, I'm going to do it every time from now on. So okay. if you just don't want to do that. Yeah, am I allowed to be in for like most of the semester? I think so, yeah. Ready for tomorrow. All right. Have a nice day. You too.